The world of entertainment, a multifaceted affair whose supporters and contributors are drawn from everywhere. Television, theatre, film and cabaret are full of talented artists, each with a part to play. But equally important are the businessmen we know. Their financial skills and marketings so often save the show. Today we're here to celebrate a financial man supreme who combined his clever business sense with an entertainment dream. Young Fred Pontin, aged 15, left school in Walthamstow with no scholastic merit and his expectations low. But the lad from Dalston Council School realised his special flair. His talent was financial. He'd become a millionaire. But how to set about it? Stockbroking won the day. So Fred began his long career. The first step along the way was a job with Gow and Parsons, an enviable position. Jobbing for a pound a week, oh yes, and plus commission. The Rock Investment Company and Bristow's Brothers too. Both were fields of learning. Fred's fiscal knowledge grew. He ran a London football pool, but Hitler stopped that lark by provoking deadly action, making all of Europe dark. When war was over, Fred shrewdly realised the need for friendly holidays, and so he set his eyes on a former military camp near Burnham on sea and started Pontin's holidays. It became the place to be. Using his financial skill, syndicates he formed with daring plans and instincts, the leisure world he stormed. He bought more camps and ran them well, establishing what he meant, then sold them to the syndicates, retaining 50%. In July 1946, Fred made a claim to fame. A public company was launched which bore the family name. 400,000 shares were placed all in a single day. It had never been achieved before. Pontins were here to stay. By the 60s, British holiday camps were doing well enough, but our weather meant the season wasn't really long enough. Only April to September contained our sunniest times, so Fred widened his activities to include some foreign climbs. Continental holidays took people to the sun. And as they did so here at home, another innovation had begun. Self-catering holiday needs were becoming very clear. His smart administration made Fred millions in a year. Wealth helped him to acquire a racehorse now and then. They were all called Pontin something, because with his business acumen, his instructions to his jockeys appear in the first three meant his name would be repeated and the publicity was free. Fred Pontin had a rival, Billy Butlin was his name. With healthy competition, friendly rivalry was the game. Their temperaments were different, their style was different too, and both men harboured great respect for their rival's point of view. Fred worked well for charities, vast monies did he raise. He was chief barker of the Variety Club, for which he won much praise. A member of Lord's Taverners and a companion rat, a jolly lot of fellows they to Fred always raised their hat. His work for sporting charities and theatrical good works too brought a knighthood for Fred Pontin and a fitting tribute too for a shrewd and clever businessman whose talents served him well in this entertainment business that we all love so well. In Lodge there is an empty chair with a collar draped thereon. It means that death has hovered near, a brother water rat has gone. Relieved of pain and illness, all earthly cares will cease. Companion rat Fred Pontin, may your spirit rest in peace. Written by water rat Peter Goodright, Poet Laureate. Read by John Sharples.